Good morning, church, and welcome to Hope Church Midway's live stream. I just want to say Psalm 63 says, Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you, so I will bless you as long as I live. In your name I will lift up my hands. So I want to invite you to join us in giving God our focus and attention this morning because his steadfast love is better than life. He's a good God and he is deserving of our praises. Thank you. 
can we can lift up the name of God. We can glorify you. And it's all exalted above above everything, God. You're exalted above everything. You deserve all the glory, honor, and power. We give you all the praises, Lord.
honor and praise and glory today because you are a beautiful God. You are a wonderful God. With the fact that you are all-knowing, all-present, all-powerful, you are all-loving. And we thank you for that, Jesus. We thank you that we can come together this morning in every single place that we're at in this sanctuary across the world and we can give you all of our praise. I pray that that's what you would see because we know how much you love us. We know that you are jealous for us. You're jealous for all of our love, not just part of us, part of our love. You want all of us. And God, I pray that where, where each individual is at right now, Lord God, I pray that we would prepare our hearts for what you're going to do in this service, for what you're going to do with us individually, Lord Jesus. I pray that your Holy Spirit would just be in every aspect. We give it all to you. We give it all to you this morning, Lord God. I pray that if there's individuals that are having a hard time giving all of themselves to you, Lord Jesus, soften their hearts right now so they can not only experience just your truth and hear your truth, but they can experience all of you, of what only you can do in their hearts, what only you can do in their lives, to heal them, to transform them, to leave them changed after this hour, after what you continually speak to them in the quiet moments when they're by themselves, Lord Jesus. I pray that what you would see as we worship you today, as we give you praise, that you would see us decrease as you increase in our hearts and our lives, Lord Jesus. That we would emanate your love because we can't help it. Not because we have to, but because we want to. Because we're driven to by what you are doing in the innermost parts of us. That it transforms us to do greater things for you, not for us. Have your way in this service, Lord God. Have your way in our hearts and our lives, Lord God. Let us be different. Let us wake up from our slumber to experience your ever beautiful presence that we can have all the time. Not just part of the time, all of the time. We love you, we worship you, and we praise your name. In Jesus Christ's name. Well, we want to thank you guys for joining us for the service today. What a beautiful time of worship for us to just recognize who our Jesus is and how we can love him in an immense way. We also want to let you guys know that if you have prayer requests, we have a prayer team that's waiting to just intercede for you. So if um, you would like to email hopechurchmidway at gmail.com, you can let us know of your needs, and we'll follow up on those needs and be able to pray for them um, until you hear what God wants to speak to you through that. We also want to let you know that there are opportunities where you can follow along with our sermon as well. So if you want to go to the YouVersion app, um, you can download that app, and you can go to the More portion of the main page and go to Events. And you can search for where it says Hope Church Midway. You can save the sermon notes for at a later time or to make personal notes for yourself. But it's a good way for you to also hear about announcements and different things that we have that are upcoming. And with the things that we have, too, we also have a couple ways that you can give to Hope Church Midway. We've been so blessed in this season to be able to do the things that we are able to do in ministry because of how people pour in even in, within their finances so that we can contribute to missionaries around the world as well as to the local community. But with those two ways to give, you can go to the Hope Church website and you can find the giving link. And when you find the giving link, you're going to want to scroll all the way down to Hope Midway Offerings. And that's where you can put in the amount that you would like to give um, to our campus and that makes sure that it goes to our campus. Um, and that includes missions and we can divide that up at a later time. If you also have limited access to internet and the giving link is not a good way to give, you can also give to us directly uh, by sending in your tithes and your offerings to our church, which is 
6059 South Archer Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60638. But this is a time where we do have a lot of opportunity to celebrate um, our graduates. Uh, we're a small church, but we have big hearts, and we want to be able to have opportunity to uh, honor those that have worked so hard and are graduating from eighth grade, high school, or college. So if you consider Hope Church Midway your, your church home, and you have a graduate or you're a graduate yourself, please email us um, at hopechurchmidway at gmail.com, and that way we have an opportunity to celebrate them. Next Sunday as well is where we are going to be celebrating with communion, so May 31st. Um, so if you want to do one thing to prepare for next week's service, the one thing would be to help prepare those communion elements so that you can join in with us as we are um, doing communion next week. Now, to, tomorrow is actually uh, the last Monday of May, um, and tomorrow is Memorial Day. And uh, we take the opportunity to honor those of our nation's heroes that made the ultimate sacrifice of their lives while serving our country. So at 3 p.m. tomorrow, um, it's the National Moment of Remembrance. And if you've never taken part in this, uh, at 3 p.m., it's typical time every year for you to do that. Um, I encourage you, wherever you're at, to take a, a minute of silence and to pray. This year, I feel like this is really different with the season that we're in in this country, uh, but we have control of what we still can do. So we can remember those that have borne the battle for us and have fought for this country for our freedom. And here's a video that speaks to Memorial Day. Thank you. take time to celebrate the lives of those who gave everything so we could be free and we're not just doing this as a footnote because as a church we're supposed to remember Memorial Day we don't put their sacrifice as a footnote the same way we don't have Jesus's sacrifice as a footnote so we want to pray for all those families who have lost someone right now God we thank you we thank you for those who did make the ultimate sacrifice God, who laid down their lives, God, to allow us to have the freedoms that we do have. God, for allowing this country to be what it is. God, without them laying down their lives, God, we can't imagine what this country would be. So God, we pray for those families that are mourning still to this day, God. We pray for those families who are affected by it for whatever war they were in. 
or whether it was in peacetime as well. We know many have fallen at different times. God, we pray that you would help to comfort those families. God, may they see your peace right now. We thank you for what they've done. And we thank you for the peace that passes understanding that you give through the Holy Spirit what you do in Jesus Christ's name. Well, today we're going to be uh, finishing the last part of our series, um, Psalms Hand Away with Jesus, and I, I pray that you've been blessed with this series, we're excited about it. Uh, it's one of my uh, favorite series that we've done because I love the Psalms. In fact, uh, I was joking around with my wife earlier, I'm still going to do a Psalm on Tuesday, even though we're done with the series today, just because I really enjoy the Psalm a lot. And uh, today we're going to be ending off with a high note of one of my favorites, uh, so as we shared a little a couple weeks ago about Psalm 22 that shared about Jesus' mindset on the cross. And today we're going to look at David's reflection on his mindset when he met Goliath. And what do we mean by this? This is basically like David's journal on what he was thinking and feeling during that time when he was up against Goliath. Now that, uh, David versus Goliath is one of the most famous historical events in the Bible. Uh, most people have heard about it, whether they are in the church or not. But for everyone, I want to give a little refresher of what was happening there. Uh, so you had two different armies that were on uh, different sides and with a valley in between. They were uh, parked on different sides, were about to fight each other, the Philistines and the Israelites. And every single morning, Goliath, the champion from the Philistines, would come down and challenge anyone to fight him. Uh, basically, it was, a, it was a, a challenge that said, well, if you take um, me, that we don't need to have all this bloodshed between the uh, armies. If you fight me, we'll surrender to you. But if I defeat you, you have to surrender to us. Now, that might seem like a pretty great challenge, but Goliath was very imposing. Um, he was over nine feet tall, and I'm six, seven, and I can only imagine somebody being that height. His armor alone was weighing over 200 pounds, just his armor. So that shows you how strong he was and how imposing of a character he was. And so this gives you a basic idea. And so he would come out there every single morning and, and uh, mock them for not coming out. But he also would mock God. He would say, well, not only are you afraid, you're afraid because your God can't do anything either. And David was bringing some supplies to his brothers there at the front line. He had three brothers that were there on the front line. And as he was down there, he... He started talking to different people, and they said, well, this is what happens every single day, and Saul's looking for anyone, Saul being the king at the time, was looking for anyone to fight this guy, anyone at all. And they would uh, give him many different things as a result of this. And so we see the bravery that happens through David, and then we see his effectiveness. He comes out there, and Saul wants to give him his armor and to put on it, and uh, you know, David was a youth. He wasn't uh, uh, fully at that uh, same height and, 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 and build as Saul had. And so he said, you know what, I can't do this armor. I'm just going to go out there with what I know. And what he knew he, uh, was a sling and some rocks. And he came out and faced up against uh, Goliath. Goliath looks at him and mocks him right to his face. And David shoots right back at him and basically says, I'm not anything, but my God is everything. And today you're going to die. He took his sling, threw a rock, smacked him straight in the head. Goliath fell. He took Goliath's sword and cut Goliath's head off. Uh, the last part you might not be familiar with if you only read the kids' version of that. It just seems like they knocked him down and that was it. But no, he even decapitated him with his own sword. Um, so this is just the intensity that we see of what happens. So we see the insulting that happens. We see the bravery that happens. We see the effectiveness that happens. That story has been used in many illustrations, from facing giants, the power of faith, to knowing that giants will fall after all. Yet knowing David's mindset gives us the greatest understanding. We're going to look at this today in Psalm 144. We're going to read the whole psalm and then break it down. Starting at verse 1, it says this. Praise the Lord who is my rock. He trains my hands for war and gives my fingers skill for battle. He is my loving ally and my fortress, my tower of safety, my rescuer. He is my shield and I take refuge in him. He makes the nations submit to me. O oh Lord, what are human beings that you should notice them or mere mortals that they should think about them? For they are like a breath of air. Their days are like a passing shadow. Open the heavens, Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains so they will billow smoke. Hurl your lightning bolts and scatter your enemies. Shoot your arrows and confuse them. Reach down from heaven and rescue me. Rescue me from the deep waters, from the power of my enemies. Their mouths are full of lies. They swear to tell the truth, but they lie instead. 
I will sing a new song to you, O God. I will sing your praises with a ten-string harp. For you have granted victory to kings. You rescued your servant David from the fatal sword. Save me. Rescue me from the power of my enemies. Their mouths are full of lies. They swear to tell the truth, but they lie instead. May our sons flourish in their youth like well-nurtured plants. May our daughters be graceful pillars carved to beautify a palace. May our barns be filled with crops of every kind. May the flocks of our field multiply by the thousands, even tens of thousands. And may our oxen be loaded down with produce. May there be no enemy breaking through our walls, no going into captivity, no cries of alarm in our town squares. Yes, joyful are those who live like this. Joyful indeed are those whose God is the Lord. Now, there's a lot to unpack here in this psalm, but you might be asking yourself, what's the point? What's the point of everything that's going on right now to look at this psalm in particular, to understand David's mindset? What is the point? Well, there's a couple of things. First of all, we will face giants. We will. We absolutely will. Many are facing giants right now, financial giants, emotional giants, spiritual giants right now in their lives. Things that seem so overwhelming that they can't do anything about it themselves. We need to know the power of faith. Many people need their faith strengthened right now. Many of us have seen during this time that we need to have something more in our lives. We're saying, I, I just feel there's something more that I had. I thought I was walking strong with God, that all this stuff came away, and I started seeing my faith starting to shake. And we need to have our faith strengthened. Many of us need to know that giants will fall. We need to know that we can win. This is important for us to know today. And how we get to see this is by seeing God as David did. And if we see God as David did, we'll know what we need for a victory. And so today we're going to be talking about the great victories that God has in your life. And again, looking at David's journal here in Psalm 144. So let's start at the very beginning, going back to that verse 1. Again, saying this. Praise the Lord who is my rock. He trains my hands for war and gives my fingers skill for battle. He is my loving ally and my fortress, my tower of safety, my rescuer. He is my shield, and I take refuge in him. He will make the nations submit to me. So where is David starting all of this? The very, very beginning here, where is he starting? Say here in verse 1 and 2. Where does David start? He's being aware of who's the boss. He's being aware of who's the boss. David knows who's in control. It's something we all need to know right now. We need to know who's in control throughout everything. Think of the words that he uses here. He's the Lord. It's the rock. It's his ally. It's his fortress. It's his tower. His rescuer. His shield. Who makes the nations submit. This brings this whole idea of what David was thinking. How he saw God allowed him to go into the battle in the first place. Allowed him to stand strong when the giant, when, when the giant seemed so tall. Allowed him to seem strong and to hold on there. We have to ask, what do we see? Are we seeing the giants or are we seeing God? What are we seeing right now? See, David was able to see God even through the midst of all this. That's why he was able to stand tall. That's why he was able to stand strong because he's focused on God and not the giant because he knew who was greater. We have to ask ourselves, do we know this? See, God isn't some nice guy that we're trying not to bother with things and who did some stuff many years ago. No, he is powerful. God is always the same, yesterday, today, and forever. He is powerful. If we miss this, we're not going to ask him for help when hard times come. We're going to miss everything. And that's something I don't want any of us to do. I don't want us to feel that we have to uh, go into a battle on our own. And we have to say, well, it's just me and whatever I can do right now, whatever strength that I have. Because you know what? We all will find the end of our own strength. Some of you are feeling that right now. You're at the end of your strength. You're saying, these giants just seem to keep on coming. The great thing about David, he picked up five smooth stones when he went out to fight Goliath. Why? Because Goliath had some brothers. He had some brothers that were out there that were other giants. He said, now I'm going to take out him. I'm going to take out all the different giants that are there around me. I am, that's how confident he was in the greatness of God and knowing who's the boss. He came out in this. We see what this looks like with Jesus and having this focus on him. We see Jesus, there was this great storm and Jesus was in this boat with his disciples and he was sleeping in the back. 
The disciples were scared. They were trying to save themselves. Jesus ends up rescuing them by just speaking out and saying, peace, be still, and everything stopped. But look at his response here in Mark 4.40. He says this. Then he asked them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? The disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man, they asked each other. Even the wind and the waves obey him. See, listen to what Jesus is saying. Jesus is asking the disciples about their lack of faith in his authority. They're saying, don't you still have faith? They were asking themselves, well, who is this man? They didn't realize who was the boss. They're saying, well, we just thought he was a great teacher. Or, you know, this was, he did some great powerful miracles. And we were interested in what he was doing. Who is this man? He wasn't man. He was God. They were missing the authority that he had. They missed it all. They didn't believe he could rescue them from the giant of the storm that they were having. Take this idea of what, how the disciples reacted to Jesus versus a centurion. Compare that to a centurion. Centurion was a Roman official, and he had a sick servant, and so he came over to Jesus to ask him for help. Matthew 8, 8 talks about this. It says, but the officer said, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come into my home. Just say the word from where you are, and my servant will be healed. I know this because I am under authority from my superior officers, and I have authority over my soldiers. I only need to say, go, and they go, and come, and they come. If I say to my slaves, do this, they do it. See, the Roman official was aware of who's the boss. He, he understood this. He said, I understand what authority looks like. Because Jesus said, I, I will go with you to help to, to heal your sick servant. He said, no, if you just say the word, I understand the authority that you have. If you say the word, everything will happen. It doesn't matter the sickness that the servant that I have that I care for so much has. No, I know the authority you have over sickness. I know the authority you have over death. And this is a person who is a Roman official who still knew the authority that Jesus had, yet the disciples forgot about it. They said, who is this man? They forgot who the boss is, yet the centurion knew it. May we always understand the authority that Jesus, is, that Jesus has in our lives. May we always understand, may we always remember who's the boss. Because when we remember who's the boss, we remember his power. And this is what David does in Psalm 144, verse 5. Saying, open the heavens, Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains so they billow smoke. Hurl your lightning bolts and, bolts and scatter your enemies. Shoot your arrows and confuse them. Reach down from heaven and rescue me. Rescue me from the deep waters, from the power of my enemies. This is such an important thing. The people saw that he understood the power of who God is. Everyone else saw a giant here. And I want you to understand this. When David saw the giant in front, he wasn't afraid because he knew that God had his back. This is important for all of us to know, no matter whatever we're going through. We might see these other things in front of us, but knowing that God has our back knowing, know, allows us to know that we can continue to move forward. That we don't have to worry. That we can understand, we can collect those five smooth stones. It's not just that giant that God's going to take down, but all the other things that are set up in front of us. That God can take down all of those things. Why? Because of his authority. Because he is the boss. And you are his child. He has your back. He's going to help you out every step of the way. David knew he wasn't going into battle alone. That's why Goliath was able to mock him. He said, well, who is this? You're saying out a dog to fight me. But you see, David knew he wasn't alone. He knew who had his back. And God has your back as well because he lives in you if you are following him. It's important for us to see. And that brings us to my favorite part of the psalm. Psalm 144 verse 3 says this. O oh Lord, what are human beings that you should notice them? Mere mortals that you should think about them. For they are like a breath of air. Their days are like a passing shadow. This brings us to the second thing that David is remembering. Again, he's standing here in front of this giant and he remembers this, this point. God is all powerful, yet he chooses to be personal. This is important for anyone who says, I am following God to understand this. And yes, he has all this power, yet he's choosing to be personal with us. I mean, think about what an ant is to a human. And that is not even as close as what we are in terms of power to God. 
I mean, when we cross ant hills, we aren't thinking about the complexity of an ant's life. We aren't thinking about the things that an ant is going through, and its emotions that it's going through. Yet, God in all of his power says, I'm caring about everything about you. I love you so much. I even care about the amount of hair on your head. That's the kind of focus he has out of the love that he has. He collects every single tear that we cry. Again, the attention to detail, the attention that is there with love, the personal uh, approach that he has in our life. This is so amazing. This is not how God sees us. When David is facing Goliath, he could recall different scriptures he learned before, much like Deuteronomy 31, 6, that I'm sure came to his mind. It says this, So be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not panic before them. For the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. Many of us need to know this verse today. See, David knew that this was a great promise from a personal God. He understood this. He had heard this verse growing up. He had, he had been able to focus in on this verse growing up. Yet here he is in front of this giant. And what does he do? He stops and he ponders the personal love that God has. He said, not only am I, am I going up against this giant, not only am I trying to face something that I can know I can't do on my own strength, but I know God is with me, not just because I know scripturally he's supposed to be with me, because a lot of times that's what we'll do. Well, I know according to scriptures, God is with me, he's there for me, he's not going to abandon me, he's not going to leave me. I know that's what the scriptures say. You see, David knew it wasn't just scriptures in a book, these are scriptures that were lived in through him, because it was personal. See, the Bible is God's love letter to you and to me. It is a personal letter saying, this is my promise for you. And David is pondering this at this point. Knowing not only am I alone, not alone because of his power, but he's personally here with me. Do we pause at times in our life when we are facing different giants? Do we pause and think of the personal love that God has for us? It's something that we need to do. We need to just pause, even in the midst of chaos, even in the midst of stress, and just realize that God personally cares for us, personally loves us, and helps us to continue to move on. I know my wife and I got hit by the storm, as many of you did as, as well, this last Sunday, and had water that we had to take care of in the, the whole nine yards. And as we were going through, uh, trying to make sure the water didn't get backed up and spending hour after hour trying to clean up, it was really easy for us to get discouraged. But, you know, we kept to go and say, well, God's got our strength. God's going to help us out. He's going to strengthen us up. He's going to allow us to continue to do this. You know, and up until two in the morning, we were able to continue to do this. Why? Because God was our strength, and he personally was carrying us carrying through with us. I mean, the Bible does say the rain falls on the just and the unjust alike, and many of us saw that to be very true. But the difference is God's helping us out, strengthening us, and helping us to deal with the different problems that comes our way. It's not just that problems will come our way. He helps us to go through it, to persevere no matter what comes our way. We have to understand it's that personal love, that personal care that God has. I mean, do we think about this personal care? I mean, think about how Jesus shows us this personal care. In Ephesians 3.16, talks about this personal care for our lives. It says, I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. See, we see that God's power is in us with his Holy Spirit. And Jesus goes one step further. He says, I'm going to be even personal by living inside you. I want to be a part of your life. I got your back. Don't worry about what's in front of you because I got your back. It's personal, living in us. So God gives us the power to defeat any enemy, fear, stress, loneliness, anything like that. But then Jesus comes and personally helps us to get through these problems. Why? Because God is love. He doesn't just write about love. He doesn't just write about caring about us. No, he comes alongside us. He lives in us, showing that love in our life. So David knew this personal care that God has. So see how he responds when he sees Goliath. Psalm 144, verse 9 says this. I will sing a new song to you, O God. I will sing your praises with a ten-string heart. For you grant victory to kings. You rescued your servant David from the fatal sword. Save me. Rescue me from the power of my enemies. Their mouths are full of lies. They swear to tell the truth, but they lie instead. See, our faith grows as we sing through the lies. 
Have you, ever, have you ever thought about that, that our praises are a weapon? I mean, David is known for the Psalms. He wrote over half of them. Well, half the Psalms. And why was it? Because he knew the power of praise, the power of stopping and pondering and remembering who God is and enjoying that. Saying, I know who I can rely on. Even in the midst of this battle, I know who I can rely on. We have to ask ourselves, who is stronger than our Savior? So we can sing through any lies that the enemy has by knowing the strength of who God is. That's why I love corporate worship. That's what we call when we all come together. And we're so excited to, to hear whenever the, the government says it's okay for us to, to meet again. We're excited to do it because we know the power of what happens when we come together in praise. And we're able to encourage one another. We're able to strengthen one another. We understand this. That we can sing in the midst of our battles. That we can lift one another up. And why can we sing in the midst of our battles? Why? Because we walk in victory because of our destiny. And worship reminds us about the promises of God. It reminds us that we are not alone. It reminds us about who power, how powerful God is. And if He is, and we're not alone, and we have all that power, then, then the promises and purposes He has for our life will come to pass, no matter what. So our attitudes and outlooks change. We know that God has a plan for our lives. We have to ask ourselves our question right now, during this time, are we seeing? Are we singing in the midst of the hard times? Are we singing in the midst of the hardships? And that's why we're so big on saying we, we need to continue worship even during this hard time. You know, we need to continue this because this encourages us. It lifts us up. It allows us to understand God for who He is, the power and personal God that we follow and that we were reminded about this. And this lifts up to our spirits. That's what David needed as he was going out there against Goliath. He needed to understand and have this song in his heart saying, I'm going to worship this because I know what's going to happen. I know my destiny that it has for us. You see, we can see this all throughout the Bible. Jesus even shows us this, that things that are meant to crush us can be turned out for our good. Luke 9, 21 says this. Jesus warned his disciples this, not to tell anyone who he was. The Son of Man must suffer many terrible things, he said. He will be rejected by the elders, the leading priests, the teachers of religious law. He will be killed. But on the third day, he will be raised from the dead. See, the cross was meant to crush Jesus' influence. That was the whole reason he was sent to go on the cross. So we want to take him out. He's been sharing all these things, and we're tired of it. We're tired of people coming to him. We're tired of people coming to hear the answers from him. So we're going to take out his influence through the cross. It was a torture device. Us wearing a cross today would be like, uh, 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 us wearing a cross back then would be people like uh, wearing, uh, you know, some kind of a lethal injection kind of a symbol today. It would be really grotesque. They wouldn't understand it. But God took something that was horrible, that was grotesque, that was horrid, and turned it for our good. He used it for all of our good. That's why we're able to sing about the power of the cross, because we know the plan that God had. He took something horrible and he turned it for our good. And we're excited to see what he's doing. We're excited to see that love that he has, that care that he has for every one of us. That even if we have a giant in front of us, God can turn something that seems so horrible and turn it for our good. How can we do this? See, David knew that God had a plan for his life. He had a destiny for his life. Goliath was only a part of the story. He was not the end. We have to remember that today. Whatever you're going through right now, whatever giants you're facing, that is a part of your story. That is a chapter of your story. That is not the end of your story. That end has already been written. That end is already being set up there. God is already helping you to go through. And he's wanting to help you to get to that destiny. He says, I have this great thing for you. Trust in me. Allow me to take you from this chapter to the next. If we're only focusing on the giants and saying, this is all that I have, we're never going to fight them. We're never going to actually go out in battle. We're going to sink and we're going to go down to the depths. And that's not where we need to go. And we need to remember that God has something greatest for us. And so we walk in victory because of our destiny. That's why it's so important for us to share about the struggles and the things in our stories with one another. So people can see that victory is available. I love hearing testimonies, people's stories. As you hear how God helped them walk through the hardest parts of their life. But you see, that was a chapter of their story. You're going to hear what God is still continuing to do. And we all need to know this right now. This is a 
a chapter that the entire world is living in right now. It's a worldwide event that's happening. This is not the end for any of us. Whether you've lost a job, whether you're sick, whether you've lost a loved one, this is not the end of your story. God has so much greater things. So let's walk in the victory knowing God will help us to get through this and help us to see the victory at the end. See, when it only seems logical to get depressed, God's people start to dream exactly like David did. Hear his dream, Psalm 144, verse 12. It says this, May our sons flourish in their youth like well-nurtured plants. May our daughters be like graceful pillars, carved to beautify a palace. May our barns be filled with crops of every kind. May the flocks in our fields multiply by thousands, even tens of thousands. And may our oxen be loaded down with produce. May there be no enemy breaking through our walls, going, no going into captivity, no cries of alarm in our town square. This is so crazy to think about. He's walking in victory before he's even fought the battle. He's already knowing. He's saying, God, I know what you have planned. I already know that there's something more to my story. I already know this is just a chapter, but you have something greater. So how can he dream of peace in a time of war? How can he anticipate a win? Again, he's doing this with a live giant in front of him. One that has scared everyone else, everyone in the military, everyone else who was in fighting age, who has been trained for battle, that should be ready to do this, everyone else who is afraid. God has helped him out in the midst of this and strengthened him. Why? Why did he do this? How did he know this? Because he knew this giant would fall. That's why he was able to stand. See, David believed because he knew what God could do. He knew he could stand against this giant. He knew he could stand up against them because he knew that God would make it fall. He knew what God could do. Do we believe in God's power? Do we believe that he cares for this? Are we walking in victory? You might be saying to Pastor JJ, you don't know how hard it is right now. And you're right. I don't know necessarily what you're going through. But I do know what God can do. That I know. I dealt with different giants of financial struggles. I've dealt with different giants of spiritual struggles. I've dealt with different giants of emotional struggles. And every single time, God has taken them all out one by one, because I know what he can do, because it's not my strength, it's his strength. And that's the power of God. It's nothing about me that's special, it's all about God, and God can do the same thing in your life. And when you stand up against these giants, you have that same faith that David has, saying, I know who God is, and how great he is, and this is just a chapter in my story. I know what God can do. You walk in that victory. We know that we will see everything turn out good, whether it's in this life or the next. We know that God will turn everything for good. We know the strength, the power, and the personal love he has for all of us. Jesus shows how he turns things that seem so bad, these great, great giants into good, in a verse that I share probably at least 12 times a year that most of the church probably has memorized by now. But Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 says this. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy of awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding the shame, and now he's seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. See, Jesus was facing battles, great battles, but he still was able to find joy. Why was he able to do this? Think of the battles. Think, think of the giants that were in front of Jesus at the time when he was on the cross. He was battling with all of our sin on him. He was battling with separation from God. He was battling with the torture of the cross itself. These are the different giants that were in front of him. But why was he able to look and joy? Because he knew what God could do. He knew what he could do through his sacrifice. He knew that by taking on our sin, he was setting us free. That's why he could have joy. He knew that by separating from the Father, he was uniting us with God. He knew that whatever torture was happening in his body, there was joy in his soul because of you being worth the sacrifice. The joy he had was you. He knew what God could do through you. 
So whatever giant you're facing today, we came from all facing different ones. May your faith be increased. May you understand God for who he is, the powerful God that he is, the personal God, the God who you can anticipate and sing to and, and, and walk out in victory because he has a great destiny for you. May you understand the power of who this God has, who he is, and what he can do for you. May we find joy. I love how he ends this psalm. Psalm 144, verse 15. Yes, yes, joyful are those who live like this. Joyful indeed are those whose God is the Lord. And why can we be joyful? Because we know we're going to see victory through God. We know what he can do. We know his power. We know how he's personal. We know that he's there with us. And so we know we're going to see a victory. That's why David could go out there with all the confidence in the world. He was insulted by his own family saying, what are you doing? The entire army wasn't willing to go out there. They were all afraid to step forward. Yet David was able to go out in strength and victory. Why? Because he had joy in him. It's one of the things we don't think about when he came out to face Goliath, that he had joy. Was he joyful because he was having to face someone who could kill him? No, he was joyful. He said, I know there's going to be a victory. And I can be excited about this. It's going to be hard right now. It's going to take some work. It's going to take effort. But I know what God can do, and I'm excited about what God can do. Are we doing that right now? Are we getting excited about what God can do, or are we only focusing on this chapter? Now, we need to focus on the author, the one who wrote it all, and say, God, I'm wanting to follow you, and I'm excited that no matter whatever the enemy meant for something bad in our life, God, you are turning it around for good. God, we thank you so much. So we pause and we think about the victory that you bring. God, I pray right now for that one who's watching. God, who needs to see the ultimate victory, God, of their sins being cleansed. God, of them getting new life through you. That person who says, I, I've known of God, but I want to know him personally. I want to walk with him. I want him to be in my life. Not just be empowered by God, not just have his power behind me, but know him personally. I want to have that kind of relationship. God, for that person, I pray that they will pray right now. God, they'll pray, God, and ask for forgiveness of their sins. God, of anything that has been going on, God, they'll just give that out to you. God, we know that we've all sinned, we've all fallen short. So God, we pray right now that you'll hear their hearts cry, saying, God, I'm so sorry, but I believe that you came to this earth, Jesus, that you died for me. You paid that penalty, and I'm so grateful. And God, I'm even more grateful that you rose again from the dead and want to have a relationship with me. God, you say that if we confess with our mouth and we believe in our heart, God, that's all it takes to start a relationship. You made it so easy because you love us so much, God. I pray for those ones who make that decision right now. God, hear their prayers. God, I pray for those who are dealing with different struggles. God, you allow them to see the victory that is available to them because of you. God, we know that many different people are facing different giants. God, I pray that they don't focus only on the chapter, but they focus on the author, that they know that you are writing a great story, God. And then when they look back on this, they're going to see a great victory. So we can sing just as David did now, excited, empowered, knowing who they're following. God, knowing who's in control. God, knowing who brings the victory. God, knowing we can rely on the promises that you gave for our destiny, God. I pray right now we will lift you up. God, that we'll be empowered by who you are. We thank you so much in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I asked our worship pastor, Pastor Hannah, to sing the song here at the very end because we need just to have an enjoyment of knowing who God is, seen in victory ahead of time. So we're going to pause and just have this time of focusing and whatever chapter you're on, just to stop and say, God, we know that you're bringing the victory. And I want to be like David right now. I want to be like David and start to sing right now about that victory. 
knowing it's coming because I know who my Father in heaven is. Let us sing it together.
thank you so much, God, for giving us victory. We know we don't deserve it. Just as David said, you know, we're, we're just breath compared to you and your power. But God, you have that personal love. God, you call us friend. God, you call us child. God, your love and your care is God, it's overwhelming when we stop and think about it. God, that's why David was able to stand strong. He knew your power. He knew you loved him personally. He knew his destiny. Yes, Lord, he knew what you could do. So God, I pray that we would remember these things. God, during this hard time right now, God, whatever giants people are facing, may they understand that no matter what giants in front of them, you have their back. Thank you so much, God, for helping us to get through this chapter, for being author of good things and helping us to get through to that victory. We will sing and praise you even in the midst of struggle, even in the midst of the battles. Because, God, we know what you can do, and we're excited to be able to share that with others. Thank you for all you're doing in Jesus Christ's name. Thank you so much for joining with us. And if you have any prayer requests that you've been going through or you said, I, I said I want to accept Christ for the first time, I said I want to follow him for the first time, please let us know at HopeChurchMidway at gmail.com. We want to follow up with you and pray with you and help you out and take these wonderful steps and celebrate with you in this great victory. Also, as a reminder, next week just have communion ready, um, just any kind of bread whatsoever, any kind of juice water type thing with you. It doesn't matter what we have to present. It matters our heart and what we're actually having behind it. So we're going to be doing that next week. We encourage you to meet with us on Tuesday at 7 for our next service. God bless you. We'll see you soon. We also, if you know anyone who needs uh, food, we're going to be doing a big food distribution, helping out with a couple of diff our different congregations in Pilsen. If you have any questions about that, please again email us, hopechurchmidway at gmail.com. God bless you. We'll talk to you later. We love you.